certain risk shouldn't change. Our biggest exposure is the dairy industry. Mm. There's a huge proportion of our national income. If that's sound at the moment, mm. then our sovereign risk ought to be stable and uh, we're not on any downgrade uh, watch from the credit agencies, mm. although they don't have a particularly good reputation just at the moment. They come no, they in don't, after they? the event. Yeah. But uh, the way I see it, our, our sovereign risk uh, should be relatively stable. Mm. It's our currency that's uh, ping-ponging all over the place, which is, a, which is a, an but issue. But everybody else is, is too, isn't it? I think so. Uh, mm. it's, it's a situation where you've got a pretty sick global economy yeah. And a bit like being a young fellow and going into the bar for a few drinks and uh, all the women are ugly, but the yeah. US is about as good as it gets. Yeah. And so that's where the money's going. All the attention is there. Mm. It's, the, it's the international currency. And as a result, um, nobody is really looking at us. You'd agree with that, James? I mean, when we look at uh, what five-year government <coughs> bonds are doing here in New Zealand, they've actually pulled back over the past few weeks and mm. over the past few months. So I think that's a pretty good indication of um, what's happening out there in the world and, and, and investors' minds as to how New Zealand's going. It, 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 I think uh, Stuart's made a good point that it's all about relativity and New Zealand's relatively, you know, relatively speaking, is looking pretty good compared mm. to these countries. We've got a... Yeah, our noses are pretty clean, really, aren't well, they? Well, that's right. We've got, we've got a budget deficit that's sort of like 4 or 5%. We've mm. got uh, government debt that's sort of like 20%, going to top out at 30%. And when you look at these other countries, they're up around 70 80%. Yeah. Um, yeah. They've, they've got much larger deficits that are struggling to get under control. So mm. we, uh, we're looking much, much better. And, and when, you, when you think about some of these, the, the governments that are overseas, then they are taking some of these measures. We've seen Germany announce um, sort of an $80 billion um, budget cuts over the next few years. Mm. Um, they don't necessarily need to make these, these uh, such mass massive cuts, but um, that's try to, trying to be a leading figure in terms of the, uh, the Eurozone, and, mm. and that they feel pressure that they have to make some, you know... Uh, they've got to be seen to be doing... They've got to be seen to be doing yeah, a few things um, and, mm. and, and leading the charge on this in, in terms of some of these other countries. So yeah. I think that's an important thing to, um, to note. Mm. Now, still looking offshore, James has often said that if Australia is in good e economic health, and it certainly <laughs> is, um, that's got to be good for us. But how does that work at a practical level? What are the the hidden benefits for New Zealand that we mightn't be aware of? I'm not sure that they are hidden. We're, oh, we're, really? seeing, we're seeing lots of uh, Australians over here um, mm. on, our, on our streets. and Record uh, bookings for the ski season, apparently. That's right. Yeah. They'll be on mm. our ski slopes. Um, mm. I think that's the biggest, the biggest um, benefit for us. That mm. uh, you know, Last year we saw a few people with their rudd checks come and um, yep. ski on our slopes and things like that, and we're going to see more, more mm. of that coming. Um, and uh, you know, we're also seeing some, some pretty good non-food manufacturing exports to Australia, so we are benefiting um, benefiting by Australia's good fortune. Our currency's been a little bit lower against the Australian dollar, so that's been good for our exports also. Um, so I think that we've seen key benefits and, and um, you know, they're out in, in our face, I guess. Mm. Now, Stuart, just looking at the G20 economies before their leaders get together later this month, am I right in thinking there's a fundamental difference in approach between America and the rest? The Americans want to stimulate economies, whereas the Europeans uh, would rather have some pretty tough austerity measures. Yes, I think the Americans are, are saying you can't expect your recoveries to mm. come from our consumers buying products. So they're saying that uh, if you think the recovery is going to come from the euro depreciating and exporting into the US, an export-led recovery, yeah. that's not the way it's going to be. You've got to stimulate your own demand within, the, within your domestic economies. Yeah. And that's uh, you know, advocating the tax cuts, mm. keeping the, uh, the interest rates down, and I think large... Uh, infrastructure investments. Mm. So if we you know, think of China, for example, largely crippled by the decline in 2008, 2009 mm. in consumption demand, so a lot of industry closed down, mm. or uh, yeah, clo if not shut down, yeah. Closed, uh, yeah. closed up a bit, yet they maintained the 8% growth rate, mm. and that's largely come from just massive infrastructure investments at the local government level.
mm. which fits in with what James was saying before. Mm. Australia, the lucky country, mm. producing the, the iron ore and the, the coal, the other yeah. base commodities, which have been so essential for China mm. in terms of its growth. Mm. So I think the, uh, the difference in the US is saying, don't expect us through our consumers to buy your products, which is going right. to get you out of the hole. Yeah. Now, James, the official cash rate, you at the ASB, along with the many others, have been predicting a rise with the next announcement from Dr Bollard. Which way do you think he's going to jump and why? Well, we've been uh, predicting a 25 basis point jump for, um, for a little while. And, and I guess the things around that uh, um, are really that our, our economy, that the local data has been uh, starting to get quite quite positive mm. um, and things are uh, things are looking looking uh, pretty good and and the reserve bank's got a they're, they're trying to uh, meet a sort of a fine line between the mm. increasing the cash rate and, and trying to control things that are sort of 18 18 months to two years out in front so it's it's um, a difficult decision for them to yeah. make but uh, we've, we have to remember that at two and a half percent then our official cash rate is at emergency levels and mm. Our economy is no longer at an emergency time. So we're mm. starting to see some positive things come out, um, and it's about time that um, you know we we start to see an increase in the official cash rate. There's some inflationary pressures beginning to mount, sort of mm. forward-looking inflation's heading towards three percent. And then when you throw in a couple other curveballs like a GST increase, the emissions trading scheme, tobacco mm. increases, ACC levies, the inflationary pressures start to get towards six yeah. percent in a pretty short time frame. So. Mm. That's why we're, uh, we're predicting the official cash rate to increase 25 points on Thursday and then steadily increase uh, from there on. The only curveball being what ha is happening in Europe mm. and uh, you know, whether there is, uh, that develops further and perhaps the Reserve Bank might just think, um, you know, we'll, we'll just pause and wait and see what, uh, what comes out of this. But um, you know, all things being equal, uh, um, you know, 25 point increases sort of looking on the cards. Mm. Well, now there's talk of a, a South Island-based Heartland Bank, Stuart, with a, a strong rural emphasis. Do you know who the main players are and what's prompted their move to, to try to form this bank? Well, this is going to get me into trouble, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we've got uh, Canterbury Building Society yeah. and uh, Southern Cross Building Society and then there's uh, Marac, which is right. the finance arm of... Uh, Pine Gould. Pine Gould, mm. yeah. So... You know, what's, what's prompted this? Well, mm. I guess farmers have been saying that uh, they uh, are not getting the, the financial assistance that they want, or that's for the sort of federated farmers line, mm. and that, uh, you know, banks have uh, tightened up. Banks have said, well, they're con in continuing to increase, increase their lending, but they're uh, watching cash flow mm. and suggesting to farmers to... Um, you know, retire debt rather than think of expansion. So you've got various tension points. And uh, yeah. I think this is um, you know, a purely a behavioural uh, mm. explanation <clears throat> that uh, if there's some unrest in that, in that group mm. and you think, well, what's the future of a building society? Where, where can this go? Mm. Uh, maybe we should repackage ourselves as a bank. Right. There's an opportunity here, there's a niche. And I think they're right. Um, Russ mm. Remington standing for directorship of Fonterra mm. uh, early this year was um, pushing for the idea of uh, another rural bank yeah. in, uh, in New Zealand. So I guess, uh, you know, if, if people are feeling unsettled, think that uh, the grass is greener mm. across the fence, then uh, people will move in and do that. Um, but, uh, James, from your point of view as, as working for a bank, mm -hmm. um, it actually is quite a long, slow, laborious and detailed process, isn't it, getting a banking licence? Yeah, it's not easy. Um, and, and I guess the, uh, the reason why we've got such a solid financial system is because those uh, regulations are tight and yeah. you've got to have... Um, the, uh, the capital behind you, you've got to have the experience behind you, the management in place, the, the board in place, all of those sorts of things. So it's going to take time and it's not going to be an easy process. No. The, uh, the credit rating agencies have got to um, run their fine tooth comb over it too. So a um, bit of work to be done yet. Well, up next, we ask our guests, where to from here?
Welcome back. Well, another good, lively discussion today. 